Hey guys, Mr. Bowman here. Today's learning objective is in white, and we are learning to find the point of intersection of given lines. And the key thing for us with what we're learning today is that word intersection. And I've got an example on the right hand side. There will be some other examples that we go through as well. The point of intersection is the point at which these two lines do cross each other. So if you think of two roads and the meaning of an intersection in that sense, it's when two roads or two paths or two equations, they cross each other. And that exact point is the point of intersection. So how we solve these types of questions, uh, we're gonna do something called solving by substitution. So it's a new skill. This is a very complicated um, skill relative to what we've been doing so far. So it isn't a big step up. And what we're going to do is one, I always start off with by writing my equations next to each other. So I call them one and two. And at that point here, we've got a given y value and a given x value. And for both of those equations, the x and the y have the same value. And what I'm suggesting we do is we know the y in both of these equations, they are mathematically the same thing. So that means y is equal to negative 3x minus 2, but that's also going to be equal to x plus 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to equate the two sides. So negative 3x minus 2 is equal to x plus 1. So because both of those are equal to y, both of those are going to be equal to each other as well. And we can find out what that x point or x value is to start off with. So first step, so let's move that negative 3x to the other side as a positive 3x. So that's going to become 4x. And that positive 1, that's the opposite of that is negative 1. So we're going to make that negative 3 on that side. We're then going to divide that both sides by 4. And that means x is going to be negative 3 over 4. And so that there would be the value. And if you think about this, um, that point there would be 1, and it's slightly less than 1. Um, so it makes sense our value looks, looks pretty accurate. The next step is, now that we have this value, we can substitute that into either of these equations. It doesn't matter which one. We're going to put the x back into any of the equations to find out what the corresponding y value would be. And I'm going to pick equation 2, just because it looks a bit easier to deal with, and I'm feeling a bit lazy with my maths, as all good mathematicians are. So that equation, y equals x plus 1. So let's put that x that we've just calculated back into the equation. Negative 3 over 4 plus 1 is going to become positive 1 quarter. And if we go back and we have a look here, if that's 1 quarter, does that make sense? Yeah, it looks like a pretty good point to me. So what that means is our point of intersection is therefore negative 3 over 4 comma 1 over 4. So that was our first example. We are going to go through two more um, just to get the hang of these examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video. If you haven't already, please write down that example so you know how to solve it. And I'm going to get in another example and then one more example after that. Okay, hey guys, I've Unpause the video. I've now updated our example for a slightly harder question. And the reason this one's harder is because it's not y equals, it is a different form of equation. So, like the first step for the first example, always write down your equation so you know what you're dealing with. So, in our first one, negative 2x plus 2y equals 3, and our second equation, 2x plus 3y equals 2. So these equations are different because there's nothing easy where it's y equals and x equals, and we can just make them equal to each other. So we've got to do a bit of algebraic manipulation to help solve our question. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the first one just because it looks a bit easier um, than the second one, and then we're going to go in and try to solve this. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to get the letter Y by itself so I can put it into that equation. So on this side here, I'm going to go 2Y is equal to 3 
plus 2x. So I've moved that negative 2x over to the other side. And over here I've got a times 2. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So that's going to become 3 over 2, which is 1 and 1 half, plus x. So I've now got a value for y. So what I'm now going to do is, see there's a y in this equation, I'm now going to put that work instead of that y. So let's do that below. So 2x plus 3 lots of 3 divided by 2 plus x is equal to 2. So hopefully you can see what I've done is I've taken out the x and I've put in the y instead. At this point here, we're now just going to solve for x. And the first step we're going to do is we're probably going to want to expand their brackets. So 3 times 1 and 1 half, well that's going to become 9 over 2. And then 3 times x, that's going to be 3. And all of that is going to be equal to 2. And then what this comes to is that comes to 5x is equal to 2 minus 4.5. And 5x is going to be equal to negative 2.5. x is going to be equal to negative 2.5 divided by 5, and that means x is going to be negative 1 half. So through the substitution that we just did, we've figured out that this point here, that x value is negative 1 half, and if you look at the graph, that does make sense. It looks like it's exactly 1 half along the x-axis. Now that we know that point, we can substitute back in to find out the corresponding y value. So it doesn't matter which equation you put it back into, you will get the same answer. But because we just dealt with the second equation, let's go back to the first equation and see what that would do. So we're going to go negative 2, and we're going to put in the negative 1 half there. So that we found out an x, we've taken that x out on the other side. We're going to add 2y, and that's going to be equal to 3. And we then go through, we use our algebra skills to find out what that y value is. So negative 2 times negative 1 half, well that's going to be positive 1 plus 2y is equal to 3, 2y is going to be equal to 2, which means y is going to be equal to 1. And if you have a look at our graph, well, that makes very good sense, given that that point is definitely between 0 and 2. And that means our final conclusion, therefore, our point of intersection is going to be negative 1 half, comma, 1. There you go. So hopefully that makes sense. And that was a very complicated uh, question. And what I'm going to do is, if you haven't got this example down, please write it down with the working. Hopefully your working is a bit more logically set out than mine, but just going to draw an arrow because once we got from that x, that bit of working goes up that way. And then our final answer goes from there. So I'm going to rub out all this and we're going to start our final example with one of the special lines used here. Okay. Okay, and we're back with our final example. We've got um, two lines, the red line, negative 3x plus negative 3x plus y equals 4. And we've got our second line, which is a special line. And because that is running through the y-axis and it's horizontal, that means that equation, that line or graph will have an equation of y equals 2. So just what we do for the other examples, let's always write down our two equations and we then look to substitute and for us it's been made extra easy we know already know a value for y so we're going to put that into that equation so negative 3x plus 2 that's going to be equal to 4 so negative 3x that's going to be equal to 2 x is going to be negative 2 over 3 and if you have a look at our graph the corresponding x value does seem to be in a good spot. We now need to substitute this point back into our equation, and we're going to do this over here. So it's negative 3 times negative 2 over 3, the x value we just calculated. We're going to add y, which we don't know yet, and that comes to 4. Now we're going to mathematically calculate what y is. So negative 3 times negative 2 is 6, so that's going to become 6 over 3 plus y equals 4. Well, that comes to 2 plus y equals 4, and that means y is going to be equal to 2. And as a result, our point of intersection, well, that's going to be 
negative 2 over 3. That's our x value that we've calculated, and our corresponding y value is going to be 2. And if you have a look at our graph just over here, that makes sense. It's clearly y equals 2, and if you go down, um, I'll, I'll believe that that's about the negative 2 third mark as well. Hopefully you find this video and these three examples useful for finding the point of intersection of given lines. Just a note, the algebra involved can be a bit messy at times, so please be confident with your algebra and make sure you're checking your work as you go. All right, let's get into some questions.